So today's video is going to be something a little different. In February this last year, it's 2022 as of recording this, I had the opportunity to travel to the Lofoten Islands in Norway. I was there participating in a workshop led by Andy Mumford and Jonas Perel from Terra Photography Expeditions. That's right, I was participating in this workshop. I consider myself a lifelong learner, so I still see value in seeking education from those that you can learn from and look up to. And Andy's work has been an inspiration to me for the last few years. His audience is also vastly larger than mine. Uh, but just in case you're not familiar with his work, uh, I'll link to his channel and put it down in the description below. Of course, with this being a workshop, my main focus was participating. Uh, but I did have an opportunity to film a little bit of video uh, here and there, mostly drone footage. A little bit of uh, traveling through the airports. And uh, I had a day at the end of the week to go film some on-location videos. So I'm not really sure what the format of this video is. I'm still kind of figuring that out as I edit it. Uh, but it was an awesome experience and I thought I'd do my best to try to share as much of that as I can in some of the photographs I've managed to capture while I was there. Truth is, I shot well in excess of 3,000 images during my week on the islands. Uh, and I'm nowhere near come done editing all of those, uh, which is part of the reason why this video is coming out months after the fact. Uh, it's also the reason why I haven't been quite as active on my channel because I've just been trying to muscle through this massive workload, get all these images edited. But the reality is uh, there's enough material here. I'll probably be sorting through this and you know working on new edits for years to come. But stick around until the end of the video and I'll stitch together a small slideshow uh, with some of the edits that I'm ready to show. And with that, here's the video I managed to capture during my time on the Lofton Islands in Norway. And I hope you enjoy it. Second flight down, onto the third. Once again, a final and last boarding call for all passengers traveling on Tap Air Portugal flight. TP202 with destination to Lisbon. If you are standing in back of the line or seated in the air. Pleasure having you with us. We look forward to seeing you sometime soon again. Wishing all of you a most pleasant weekend. Thank you and bye bye. It's a day later. I am three planes down and two to go. <laughs>
long two days of traveling, but I'm finally at my destination. So I'm on my own for the first night uh, because I flew in early so they could be here at a reasonable time tomorrow because all the flights were gone when I went to book. So I rented out this room in like this old fishing cabin kind of style thing. It's got a loft and stuff in it. It's really cool. Check it out. It's got a fully stocked kitchen, pots and pans and you know, a cooktop and an oven and everything. It's super cool. So I just had dinner down in the restaurant that's in the lodge. They have a really nice little restaurant down there. It's really reasonably priced and the food was great. My first Norwegian dish was a big old slab of cod. It's really good. It's really awesome. And with that, I think I'm tuckered out. I'm going to go to bed. It's only eight o'clock, but it's well past dark in the islands up here. It gets dark at like four o'clock. And my body clock hardly knows what the heck's going on. I'm so jet lagged. It's sad. So I think it's time to lay down and get some sleep. And then in the morning, I meet up with the rest of the group and uh, start the workshop. So stoked for that. It's a beautiful place. Cod liver oil. The first photography session was later that evening after meeting up with the group. And it was my first chance to see what I'd be working with over the coming week. And I have to say it didn't disappoint. I felt like I got the full Arctic experience. Fortunately, the next day, the weather was a little more accommodating. This is the first clear day I've seen at Lofton at all. <laughs> Check it out. Out of the many small towns we'd visited, 
I think one of my favorites was a small fishing village of Nusfjord. And as it turns out, it's one of the oldest fishing villages on the Lofoten Islands. Both times we visited, we were there with dinner reservations, and we had arrived in town after the evening light had already been past its best. So although I didn't do a lot of photography, with the focus being on just getting some dinner, it was still a lot of fun to walk the piers and check out all the cool buildings and the small fishing boats, and I did manage to get an image or two with the drone. Also, if you're ever in Nussfjord, or anywhere in Lofoten for that matter, try the fried cod tongues. What no one seems to tell you is that the Hanoi village shot is taken from a sketchy one-lane bridge with traffic whizzing by. Oh, big old bus. So if you go there, keep your tripod legs tucked in and watch yourself. So this is quite a famous red shed here up here in Norway. Thomas Heaton shot this, and, as well as many, many, many others. And I'm gonna shoot it too. Sorry for the audio, uh, it's windy, and I don't have a microphone. I'm just using the onboard mic here, so uh, the audio is bad, I apologize. It's pretty close to sunset right now, but there's no light because uh, it's pretty heavy cloud is rolled in. We're actually getting some snow right now too, which is kind of the conditions I wanted. I've seen this before. I've seen people shoot this in the snow. And I kind of, I kind of think that's probably the best time to shoot it too. It just kind of adds an extra element to it. Uh, but I keep taking shots as, as the snow is blowing by because it's kind of all about timing. I'm just picking the best moment in time uh, out of several shots. Not very big snowflakes, so it might be hard to see, but there is some wind that's picking up. And, moving drifting snow in the foreground, which I think is really cool. It's a cool photo, I can see why everybody shoots this. There's a lot of footsteps in the foreground, but I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, oh, that was a good moment there. Cause we're not gonna get the kind of snow that's gonna, you know, remove this in the foreground. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So I framed this up with my 24 to 70. I think I'm at right at 70 millimeters too. Just fill in the frame with this red hut and the snow. And, and of course the sea in the background with the mountains. The settings on this is F8, one over 10, ISO 100. I was interested. Yeah, and it's just about, like I said, it's just about picking the, the most you know, opportune moment of time. You know, ideally when, this, when the wind's kind of blowing the snow around a little bit and it's drifting a little bit, kind of seemed like a cool shot. So my meter's telling me to shoot this a lot darker than I am. I've had a, I've added a stop and a third to the exposure because there's so much white. If you shoot it at what that what the meter says is correct, it would be completely underexposed. Other than that, it's just kind of about perspective, trying to line up all the elements. So I want to make sure the point of the roof doesn't break the horizon line in the background in a strange way. I want to make sure that it's somewhat natural looking. Is just completely awkward. Uh, and then there's parallax. So you got to kind of like move your tripod in such a way so that you know the peak lines up correctly and you're looking straight on at the building instead of being you know you know off to the side or something it might be a little off kilter and look a little strange 
Yeah. I think it's gonna be the only shot I do for tonight. It was a lot of driving to get here and there's no light. There's, there's absolutely no light. It's completely gray skies. But this is a cool photo and I'm, I'm happy to shoot it even if it is one of the icons. Um, I've never shot it before, so I'm happy to have done so now. With that, here's the shot. week with Andy and Jonas and the rest of the workshop participants have been it was a fantastic week absolutely just trip I'll never forget but I'm here a day extra because my flights uh, were a little later than everyone else so I've got a day to myself this morning I came out to a location that we visited becoming very familiar with now sorry taking shots here as I'm talking uh, becoming very familiar with this location. This is the third time I've been here this last week. Uh, but this is actually probably some of the best conditions I've had in the morning here. Most of the mornings have been dark blue skies, but this is with some cloud activity that looks really beautiful up here with the sunlight, you know, early morning sunlight clouds. Over the a little bit of atmosphere over the peaks. The tide's out though. So the foreground here, there's a lot of seaweed and a lot of rocks and a lot of distractions just because the water level is so low. Uh, so I've come way out to the water's edge looking for some foreground interest. And then what I'm actually using is this little bit of an arc here in the foreground rock here that's kind of you know, acting as a guide for some of these waves coming in. So I'm used, trying to use water motion as foreground interest. So I'm trying to catch her the wave action at just the right moment. I think it's working okay. I'm framing this up with my wide angle lens at 16 millimeter. It's a 16 to 35 by 4. Between the vertical composition. And I've got the beautiful mountain range of the clouds, you know, kind of pushed towards the top of the frame to try to use a little bit of the wide angle distortion uh, to help show them as massive and impressive as they really are, because they really are huge mountains. Um, but I don't want them too close down in the middle of the composition because it just makes your mountains look really small. The foreground is just this wave action. I'm just trying to make sure I capture something interesting with the waves. And what I've done is I put my camera in high speed mode. So I'm just holding the shutter down as a wave comes in. I'm just taking multiple shots. Just click, 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 click as it comes in. And then I'll go pick the, the best moment later uh, to use for foreground. It fills up your memory cards really fast, but it's a lot easier to try to time the shot that way. Ooh, big wave. Every so often you get a nice big wave coming in here. Um, it's past low tide, so it should be rising. So the waves are getting bigger and bigger as I'm moving along here. I have to be careful not to get my feet too wet, because i got to get on an airplane here later this, uh, this evening. So. so shutter speed is king here. I'm shooting these at F8. Uh, my shutter speed right now is 1 over 40 for the sky, and then I'm exposing slightly brighter for the foreground. Uh, since the sky is so much brighter and I'm not using any grad filters on this because I don't want to increase my exposure time here and I don't want to, the light was so good when I came down here I didn't want to screw around trying to set up uh, grad filters because it was just kind of a fleeting moment. Looks like about 1 over 20 is working for the water in the foreground. I don't want it too long because I don't want it smooth. I want to show the wave action because it's, you know, that's kind of the interest is the, the motion of the waves. I don't want to smooth it out too much by increasing exposure time. But yeah, beautiful morning here. I think these, these images look like they're turning out pretty well. I think I'm going to scout around and see if I can find another foreground, possibly shoot some more images, but my sky is kind of losing my sky, you know. That early morning glow was, was present when I first got here, but it's starting to kind of let up now. Yeah, another beautiful morning here in the north end of Norway in the Lofton Islands.
this is another location that I'm quite familiar with. Uh, and I came out here because during the workshop, we kind of got really flat light conditions. And I noticed the sky was breaking up over this, this beautiful set of mountains out here. So I thought I'd come out here and try this again real quick. Well, there's a little bit of dynamic light kind of come breaking through the clouds a little bit. Yeah, snow plow going by. So originally I, uh, I ran down here to try to use a wide angle lens to shoot this foreground interest here that I've got, some ice tiles kind of that have been pushed up against the bank of this fjord. And it worked okay, I think, for foreground, but of course the wide angle lens makes the mountains look like they're really far away. But it's a beautiful scene and the sky was opening up a little bit, so I thought I'd try it. But as I was sitting here shooting that, uh, the sky opened up over this little part, this like valley that's got some interesting peaks in the background, a lot of atmosphere. And I stuck the long lens on it. I have a 100 to 400 with me. And I shot right at 400 millimeters too and just isolated these peaks with a backlit sun in them. It looked, it looked really good. I'm still actually taking exposures, but I think the backlit kind of silhouette vibe looked really good. I was really happy with that. I actually might like that better than the wide angle shot I was shooting. Not sure. But it's a beautiful scene. It's where there's a couple of really famous bridges. I flew the drone to get a shot of this mountain up here that's uh, kind of shark fin shape that was pointed out to me by Andy Mumford. Um, yeah, now I'm just kind of watching the sun kind of break out of the clouds and I don't want to stay too long because I have a different location in mind for sunset. It's a beach location. I think I might have to leave here pretty soon in order to get there before the sun goes all the way down. So yeah, fun location to revisit one last time. Not sure if I'm any happier with these images than I was uh, with the ones I had during the workshop, but it's always fun to try again. Apologies for all the noise. I am, as you can hear, I'm right by the sea and a lot of waves crashing around me. So apologies if the audio is a little rough. But I'm at what I think is gonna end up being my final location in Norway. So I get on a plane tonight and leave the Lofoten Islands and it's pretty much past sunset right now, approaching blue hour. There's still some color in the sky, so I'm, I'm still shooting but all the light's gone on these peaks because uh, the sunset behind some larger peaks in the background. So I'm just shooting for the sky and the wave action right now. But I've come down to a beach that we've hit once. I'm kind of repeating locations on this last day that I have for myself, uh, just to try to improve on some areas that I thought had a lot of potential and maybe I didn't quite do justice to. So it's kind of a second chance on some of these things. But this one is a location that's got a beautiful mountain range in the back. And most of these photos do. I mean, that's what you come here to shoot is all these beautiful mountains on these, on these island chains. But I've got a really nice rock outcrop in front of me that's, that the waves are breaking against. And it's kind of channeling the waves in my foreground. And I'm taking several exposures trying to capture the wave action. The water is this beautiful shade of blue, aquamarine blue. And you got these dark, heavy, dominant rocks in the foreground. Once again, kind of like this morning, this is all about timing and trying to get the shutter speed correct. Uh, I don't want to smooth all of this action out because it's really active. You know, the tide is actually receding now, uh, but it's high. And I want to capture all of this action of these waves crashing on these rocks is what I'm after. Uh, so I've got my camera in high speed shutter mode again. And I'm just, as these big waves come in and they kind of rush over the foreground rocks, I'm just kind of holding the shutter button down and taking several exposures just to get, you know, the perfect moment in time. And then I'll go back and I'll try to pick out which shots those are. Here's big wave. All right, holy cow. Yeah, so on my 5D Mark IV, I got about 17 shots I can buffer. And then it has to write those to the memory card, so it takes a second. So I gotta like, 
about every other wave I can shoot. Uh, but it fills up memory cards real fast doing this. This scene's gonna be a little more complex. There's some really nice light just barely kissing the very top of these mountain peaks when I got here. I probably should have been here about another 15 minutes earlier than I was. It, it looked really good driving in and I knew I didn't have much time, but there wasn't much I could do about it. Uh, so I got just a little bit of light on the mountain tops. Um, I took an exposure at F8 for that, focusing for the mountain peaks to keep that nice and sharp. I don't remember what the shutter speed was on that. Uh, but this is going to be a blend of exposures because I have another one for the foreground which also was an F8 exposure. Uh, but it was a stop dark brighter in order to get the darker tones of the rock exposed correctly. So it's a bracket but it's also a focus stack. And then for the wave action what I'm doing is I've opened my shutter to 5.6. And I set my ISO to 400 so I can keep my shutter speed fast because I don't want to blur the waves. I want to keep them nice and sharp, you know, so you can get like droplets and like the wave crest and stuff so that that all has detail on it. Uh, because I want this to kind of have like a more jagged appearance, you know, so that it communicates, you know, all the action and motion in the water is what I'm really after. Big one, here we go, all right. I picked a pretty opportune spot where uh, my feet can stay up high, but I got waterproof boots on, so my feet aren't, although my boots are getting wet, my feet aren't. But every once in a while, there's a big enough one that comes in and gets kind of the bottom of my pants a little wet too, so I'm trying to, trying to be careful not to fall in the ocean here, or in the Arctic Sea. So the faster shutter speeds definitely got me the wave action that I was after. And I like the way that it communicates the feeling of just how active this beach was while I was there. But I did capture some longer exposures after stopping the video, and I composited that together with an image taken from a previous day. You can let me know in the comments which one you think was a better result. Just absolutely beautiful. It's bittersweet knowing that this is my last shoot, my last location, because it's been such an amazing time this last week in the Lofton Islands, but Norway is just so beautiful, but I mean, I gotta go home sometime. But this is, this is a nice way to end the week though. It's a beautiful, beautiful location. Yeah. So here's a shot. Here are those images, along with a small collection of others that I captured during my time on the Lofton Islands in Norway.
Thanks as always for watching, and leave me a comment and let me know which photo was your favorite. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button while you're down there, that sure helped me out. Take care, and I'll catch you next video.